everybody, it's Sally here and welcome finally to Tuesday Teaching Tips. I've been having a few technical issues but I've tried a different browser and I'm hoping that this time this is going to work and that I'm broadcasting and if you're out there and listening then please do give me a hi Sally so I know that I'm not just talking to myself because I have just done this once. <laughs> all to myself. So um, welcome and today I want to share with you um, a little game that we've been playing recently and I've been using here in my teaching studio which is the secret code game and my friend Sharon introduced me to this and it has gone down an absolute storm in my studio and um, some of you might have heard us talk about this last week when we had our free webinar or the other week when we had our free webinar about rhythm flashcards you know, rhythm is such an important part of what we do. And I think quite often we actually um, ignore it. Oh, I can see Natasha's there. So thank you, Natasha, for saying you're there. And I know I'm not just talking to myself. So um, thank you. I know I can broadcast happily now. So rhythm is a really fundamental part of all our music making. And I think in many ways, leaving it on the page of the music is not the best place for actually teaching our pupils to have that sense of rhythm, to understand how to count rhythm and to eventually to have a feel for the rhythm. So I like to play lots and lots of games off off the music and the way I do that is by using flashcards such as this one for example and what I've been doing um, in the last week is I've created a little um, secret code game and just outside the door of my teaching studio um, in my hallway there is a table and on the table I am putting a couple of flashcards as appropriate for the particular age or um, level of the students so for my elementary pupils they're just having quite straightforward ones for those at sort of intermediate level or above then they tending to get six eight ones compound time ones so i put i choose a couple of uh, flashcards if i'm really clever i choose a couple of flashcards from a piece <laughs> that they are currently working on and um, these go outside on the table along with a couple of instruments yeah could be this one and it could be this one for example they go outside on the table along with the instruction written instruction choose an instrument work out the rhythm flashcards and then tap that rhythm to gain entry to the piano room this week and they have absolutely loved doing this and um, I did it last week and the week before I think and this week uh, there was one one boy who I hadn't quite managed to sort out the right flashcards for him and he actually put his head around the door he said Sally I need a secret code <laughs> which was lovely um, so I hastily found the secret code for him. So what it, it does for the students is it really sort of energizes the start of the lesson and, and it tells me actually whether or not they are understanding the rhythm work that we're doing. Okay, so that's a lot of fun, the secret code game. And I have to say, playing those kind of little games Along with, if you remember last week, I talked about doing studio challenges and today is the very last day for Flash Note Derby Challenge. Those two things combined together. I don't know whether it's that, but or spring is in the air, but my students are just flying at the moment in terms of their motivation and their practice. So, you know, everything has got a real buzz. And I think it's because we, we play and we have quite a lot of fun. So there we go. That would be my top tip get and play the secret code game and uh, work it out so that it works in your studio and use some flashcards. If you haven't got flashcards, of course, you can just use post-it notes. I was looking around for one. I thought I had some available. Here we go. Just, just get and write a rhythm on a post-it note. Even better is if you can get a rhythm that is in a particular piece that they are learning at that time, because then that's really integrating the learning. That's the first last. That's the Tuesday teaching tip. Lastly, though, I would like to uh, invite you, if you're not already coming, to a free webinar that Sharon and I are giving tomorrow. And it is all about um, how to make sure, how to know whether your student is ready to start their grade one exam preparation. So that's particularly relevant for people in the UK or um, in other parts of the world who use any of the three British exam boards. That's ABRSM, that's uh, London College of Music and Trinity. If you use any of those, then this will be a good webinar for you to attend. It's completely free. And I'll put the link just down below here. It's at 11 a.m. and that's Greenwich Mean Time, which will be um, about 6 a.m. I think 
in Eastern Standard Time over in the States. Uh, Australia, that will probably be early afternoon for you and in the Far East as well. We'd love it early afternoon, late afternoon. Actually, it'll probably be almost time to go to bed, won't it? Sorry about that, Australia. Uh, we'd love it if you were able to join us. Lots of people have already signed up. OK, that's enough for me. Enough burbling. And I'm hoping this really did record this time. Thank you to everybody who's joined. So I've got Angie just coming in from, ah, you're at lunch break at school. I do appreciate you spending those precious moments with me. And again, thank you to Natasha for coming to watch. And Sharon, Sharon Scott. Sharon, I've told you this before, you're our number one fan. And um, thank you for oh, Natasha's look coming to the webinar. Good to hear that, Natasha. I should be looking out for you. All right, then. That's enough from me. Thank you, folks. Have a good afternoon wherever you are in the world. Bye for now.